Morning. Hey, morning. Good morning. This is coffee with the Masons. And I'm having water. She's having water. So it's coffee and water with the Masons. Honey, you pulled on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. So, how's everybody doing today? I trust everybody's doing good. I'm doing all right. Having coffee. Love it. Mm. Have you pooped this morning, honey? Twice. Twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, we have a few topics today. I think we're going to go with how addiction affects daily life. Or maybe a series of videos. Yeah, because it's how much time you got, really. <laughs> uh, addiction, how does it affect daily life, honey? Uh, well, recently you went to the dentist. Well, when you when you quit your job uh -huh. and then went to jail, uh, we got Cobra paperwork in the mail. And we went ahead and bought dental. We could not afford uh, life health insurance. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing. We don't have health insurance right now. Um, and But we do have dental. So he went to the dentist and I had to um, call ahead and let them know I'd be paying on a separate day. Yeah, because one, one of the things as far as me being in recovery and fighting the addiction is we both agreed that I'm not going to have any cash or any money on me. Or debit cards. Or debit cards. Or credit cards. And we both think that's a good idea. No matter how you feel, no matter from a day-to-day -day basis, if all it takes is one addictive behavior to take over your life. And next thing you know, you're spending money on stuff you shouldn't be spending money on. Putting poisons in your body you shouldn't be putting in your body. So, yeah. So there's a lot more uh, communication that has to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from, do you need gas today? Then let's go buy gas. Or I've got to go buy um, a gas card, a prepaid gas card, in small amounts. Um, it's, it's things like that that require a lot of communication. And he's in the recovery phase, so the communication is, I feel, mostly effective. Yeah. Um, Getting better and, too. And honesty. There's there's a lot more honesty about things. Uh, he has no um, money wise. He has no access to. I have a one dollar bill in my wallet. Checking account. $1. No no access whatsoever. I ended up getting a separate checking account while he was still using, and I kept, I keep the bulk of the money over there. So if he relapsed, even thought about relapsing, even thought about thought about it. He could never go by there and get more than twenty dollars. And, and don't 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 make the mistake of thinking that it's uh, so a way to some for someone to control your life because this is this is a solution that we both came up with that we both think works. And I don't feel like she's being controlling. I feel like she's helping me recover. So, and we're also keeping the family budget going. So yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. Um, I went to the doctor this morning. Um, when I when we lost health insurance, um, my doctor's office gave me paperwork for a foundation um, to cover my medical expenses for the next six months. So I went to the doctor and did a follow up visit and got some prescriptions. And and you know my husband is an addict. Don't prescribe anything that's going to hinder. His recovery. Yeah, we don't keep controlled substances in the house. Not one. At all. Not one. So, and and, and then the, then there's the cost. I've got to, we've got to pay out of pocket. So it's got to be cheap drugs, and they can't be controlled drugs. <laughs> cheap and non-controlled. Cheap and non-controlled. And then I called. It's not that complicated, really. I uh, I ended up calling um, our pharmacy. We currently use Publix, and they offer. They offer a lot of stuff free. Yeah, my blood pressure medicine is actually free. And they also, um, like when I call them and explain our situation today, I uh, will just put it on a discount card. So my free to cheap prescriptions that aren't controlled are also going to be on a discount card. How would you, how, what, what kind of discount you get for free? 
I'm just saying. Ooh, I mean, I'm just, it? I'm just saying these are the hoops I have to go through because we don't have. Wouldn't that be awesome? We you get a free, a discount on free, which means they would have to pay you to take it. I like it. If it's not free, or a four dollar medicine that's being I got discounted. You. I got you. Um, so these are some of the hoops that we have to jump through. Whew, for where we're at. Okay. Taking a, taking a moment away from serious. You know, this is actually a serious, serious story I want to tell you, but it's kind of funny. The day I went to court, which was what, three weeks ago now? Four weeks ago? Uh, I think this is your third week out. Okay, yeah. Is it three? Sure. Yeah, three. This is the third week. Um, I went to court and... Starting the fourth week. Yeah, Starting. and I decided I was going to plead guilty because I already knew they were going to give me probation and they tried to give me an outpatient or inpatient treatment. I told them I would take outpatient because there was a lot of stuff around here needed to be done and slowly chipping away at that. But I'm from I'm from South Carolina and I was on probation there. Yes, I do play video games <laughs> and that's what I was doing this morning. But my wife told me that even when you're retired you gotta take you a day get off. A day off. Everybody that's gets a day perfect. Off. Anyway, back to the story. I was under the impression that South Carolina had a hold on me so I could come and take care of my probation there because I still have two months. now two months left on it, but I had three months then. Well, the day I went to court, I'm settled in for at least another 60 to 90 days that I'm going to have to stay locked up. Well, they have this little intercom thing in there, and they came across the intercom and told me to pack up my stuff for release. I didn't agree with them. So I go over to the intercom and push the button, and I'm arguing with them. I said, <laughs> no, no, you, you you said my name. The guy said, yeah, pack up your stuff for release. I said, you don't understand. You said my name. You, you No, I'm not leaving. He said, pack your stuff up. You're going home. I said, no, I'm not. Can't go home. I got to go to South Carolina. Apparently, I didn't. And he's burning up my phone. I'm so. doing my I'm doing my circular route. I'm stopping here. I'm stopping there. Um, he's burning up my phone. And I we can't talk on the phone in Georgia. You've got to pull over and do it. Yeah. Or, or it's it's bad. Yeah, it's hands free when you're driving. But it was funny because I called like three times and she didn't answer. So I called a fourth time and she answered. And you could hear the I was the agitation. I was you like, could hear what the are agitation in her voice, and Phone I said, calls cost money. "I said, honey, are you sitting down?" She goes, "I'm driving." This is the direct quote. What the hell do you want? I don't uh, think a, I said that. a ride home? She said, "You're out." I said, "I'm walking toward the door now. Please come get me." We were both in shock. It was it was a good one week, maybe a week and a half adjustment period just on her part because we weren't ready for this. We weren't ready at all. We weren't expecting it, but. I, I think I'm the only person that, one, we called the cops to turn me in, and two, I argued with them when they told me I was getting out of jail. I told them no, I wasn't, so. You didn't want to get your hopes up. Maybe, maybe I'm. Tell them what they did about some of them had to go get their clothes on and they oh had to turn around. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting dressed, and there's like five of us, and Two of the five, they've already got their clothes on, and the guys look at them and said, Oh, wait, no, we found a hold on you. <laughs> Take your clothes back off. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah, there's no way to get out of there because everything's locked up. But I'm telling you, they would have had to tackle me. Once I got dressed, I was running. Just me. But anyway, what else we got? Anything else? Uh, we can talk about community resources. Oh, community resources. What are, as, as, what are we using? What are we using for resources? My, my, my biggest thing is I go to a class every week at, at the probation office. It's a two-hour class. that They have a counselor that comes in, and they offer class and individual sessions. I haven't done an individual yet, but I am going to. But we also go to Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is a faith-based recovery. Yeah, they do talk about the 12 steps, but they mention God and Jesus and them, and that's... I'm a faithful believer in Jesus, so I I like Celebrate Recovery. The small groups are, are just getting into the small groups. I don't necessarily feel like I have to do the small groups, but it is it is nice to have people that are going through the same thing because I can sit here and 
talked to my wife about it, but she's never been through it, so she wouldn't understand every aspect of it. The guys in the small groups, they know they know what you're going through. So, I mean, even the ones that facilitate the groups, they know what you're going through. So, there's nothing you can tell them that they probably haven't already heard or even been through themselves. So, there are other meetings you can go to, but I find that the meeting at the office, the two-hour class at the office every week, celebrate recovery, and then going to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, sitting in prayers, prayer groups, prayer circles, Bible studies, and that works for me. So, All right. Talk about uh, how addiction affects work, planning, and the future. Something bit me. You, you'll be all right. Focus. No, no, it bit me. Anyway. Work. How does addiction affect work? Addiction affects work because you find that you're relying on the substance you're using just to get through work. That's how I started using again. I would just enough to get me through. And even though I use mostly at work, it still turned into something I couldn't stop. Okay. Like an avalanche. My future plans? My future, future plans. or how to make I find we can't make plans. I we find can't, I can't make plans. We can't make plans. I can plan to do something according to my beloved spouse's plans to do something. This one here. And within within 10 to 15 seconds, she's had a change of heart. Whereas I'm settling in, I'm anchoring down to carry my plans out. And all of a sudden, I've got to change plans. You would think it's frustrating. And it is. But it's, it's something that I have to work through on a daily basis. I've, I don't I don't get mad about it anymore. That but. sounds like a personal problem. <clears throat> I find addiction affects our planning. Um, we can't go more than, like, currently five or six months out. And that ties in with money and how we're... How we... Are financing his recovery. We basically cashed in his retirement. It wasn't a huge amount, but we paid ahead on the mortgage like five months. I got a job, and between the mortgage being paid and me working weekends, I'm home through the week monitoring him and and the children, and focus. <laughs> so, but after that, we don't know. We don't know. We're kind of figuring it out as we go. Is he going to be ready to go back to work? Am I going to have to pick up extra hours? Um, it's hard to make plans because I'm a long-term planner, and it's hard to get past February. Um, because I don't want. We don't want to rush his recovery. We don't want him to go back to an environment similar to where he relapsed before we don't know if he's going to be able to work uh, he thinks he can uh, we just there's so many unknowns and we don't want to put pressure on you so it's hard to make plans it's hard to juggle the finances like we're good till february after that it's kind of touch and go um i have my own health issues and working more than part-time it, it I can't do it for long. I'll be on borrowed time if I start doing it. And I'll get sick. So that's kind of where we're at. It's hard to make plans. It's hard to see past five or six months. Because there's so many unknown variables. I don't look past five or six days. Five or six months. That's her thing. Not mine. I really don't like to look past five or six hours. But, yeah. Um, what, we tell also story. have... I'm going to tell a story real quick. Okay. Yeah, you know, you got to put some lighthearted comedy in here. Yeah. Right now and then. Well, so, done. you know, I'm writing this book. I think I've mentioned it once or twice. But what it is, is my life story. And some of the stories I may be sharing with you from time to time. But there's one in particular that I was thinking about last night. For some reason, it struck me as funny. When we first got married, I was taking her to South Carolina. We would go back pretty regular, at least once a month, I think. Try not to anymore. But I was having her, I wanted her to meet some of my friends and family. And there was a buddy of mine named Robert. I won't use his last name for obvious reasons, but we, we called him Shaggy because he looked like just like Shaggy off Scooby-Doo. Well, I wanted to meet Robert. 
And we're at Robert's house, and this is back when I still drank a few beers. We're having a few beers or 12. And I don't think it was just, it wasn't that kind of visit. Speak for yourself. <clears throat> I was drinking beers. And we were, we were watching Rodney Carrington on YouTube because that's one of the things we did. We got together, we watched comedy, we laughed. Well, I had this thing that I still do today, and I'll tell my wife, I'm going to chop her in the throat. Well, one day she was coming out of the kitchen. Where does that expression come from? I don't know. The military. Uh, you know. Anyway, she was coming out of the kitchen, and I went through the motion of the throat chop, and I stopped short, but she walked into it. Chopped her dead in the throat, and I, I kind of freaked me out a little bit. Well, we're in South Carolina visiting my buddy Robert, and I don't know where she got it from because I still, to this day, do not remember him having any trees in his yard at all. But she's got a stick in her hand, holding it like a baseball bat, and she tells me she's going to hit me with the stick. <laughs> and she swings the stick, and either she forgot to pull up or just didn't want to pull up. Hit me dead in my forehead with a stick. <laughs> Whap. Right here. I'm surprised don't you don't I still see the dent. I was not, I was, I don't even know why I did that. I, I don't know why either, but apparently her and Robert thought it was just hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. I ended up bringing the stick home and putting it on we my fireplace it on mantle. The mantle. <laughs> we ended up taking it off the mantle about two years later and she used it as a paint stirring stick. So, yeah, that's some of the stuff I have to deal with. All right, do you want to touch on no. retirement or health? Neither. Really? Mm-hmm. We don't currently have any retirement. <laughs> um, and that's healthy. That That's an effect, of, somewhat of an effect of addiction, not entirely. Um, as far as health goes, how is your health? How has it affected your health? It's better. My health, is, I, it's it's more psycho, psychological. It affects the psyche more than it does physical. It does affect physical because, you know, you're putting poison in your body and your body's not used to having that poison in it. But it affects your mind. My mind's growing stronger every day. I um, still forget where I put my keys and my binkies and my hat. And, He's very forgetful. And, very forgetful. and then when I find it, I'll set it somewhere else. And I'll be dang if I don't forget where I said it again. It happens. But I, I attribute that to some of the drug use, but I think a lot of it's just, you know, I'm absent-minded. Should we talk about Mr. Cooper? Mm, no, we don't have time. Okay. Not today. All right. Should have done that today anyway. We'll, we'll talk but, about it tomorrow. Yeah. But just want to share a little bit about uh, how addiction affects life, certain aspects of life, share a couple of funny stories with you. Uh I least, find right now I we. I think they're funny anyway. I find right now we have to. Um, we almost over communicate versus under communicate to make sure he's got everything he needs without having but one dollar in his pocket. He's got a buck in his pocket because it this just helps. He's in a he's in the vulnerable phase. Phase three is vulnerable. Um, it, phase three is vulnerable. You, you suffer more depression and. Phase three Thoughts is vulnerable. Self worth. She she read this in a book, and website. He told that. me to do research, and then he got mad at what I figured out. Well, you gotta look at more than one site. Anyway, I did. Anyway, I did. Anyway, that's enough. We're not gonna argue on YouTube, are we? I'm right. She's always right. Not always. Always right. No. But yeah, that's how it affects day to day living. It every aspect of day to day living it, it touches on and some, one form or another. Yep. And. Yeah. But, but. He's getting a, better. Addiction. Day. How many days clean? I have 56 days clean now. I thought it was 56 yesterday. It was. I don't count today until it's over. Okay. Yeah. I got to get right. through this day to have 57. But, um. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time for we'll, another cup of coffee. We'll, we'll catch y'all later or tomorrow. All right. Turn the thing off. Have a good day, guys. Have a good day.